It's all politics for them. The ends justify the means, and, and it's complete hypocrisy. You see this in, in the corporate media. You see this among Democrats. On January 6th of 2021, you had tens of thousands of people peacefully protesting, and yet the corporate media and Democrats slander them with the, the made-up term insurrectionist. And yet, in this instance, that they are not willing to call off their goons even now, even now as this has the potential to escalate and escalate further. Ah, right. So the protesters who've been outside of these justices' homes, who've been 100% peaceful, who've not damaged property, who've not made any threats or caused any harm, they should be more like those gentle January 6th protesters who may or may not have erected a guillotine and stormed the US Capitol looking for Nancy Pelosi and Mike Pence so that they could assassinate them, all the while destroying whatever they came into contact with and smearing their own shit on the walls. Am I getting that right? I mean, talk about rewriting history. If Ted Cruz is going to pretend that the insurrectionists on January 6th were a calm, soft-spoken, kind people, maybe at least wait a little longer. It's not like this was 10 years ago. It was last January. We were all here. We all remember. We watched a horde of those people bludgeon a police officer with an American flag in an effort to kill him. We've all heard the audio with chants of hang Mike Pence. I know Ted Cruz traffics and lies. But dear God, either this guy is that high on his own supply that he actually is starting to believe that bullshit that he's peddling, or he just thinks that the people who watch him are gullible enough that they'll believe him. But either way, this is just peak shamelessness from Ted Cruz. And bear in mind, this isn't the only time that Cruz has tried to rewrite history when it comes to January 6th. We are approaching a solemn anniversary this week, uh, and it is an anniversary of a violent terrorist attack on the Capitol where we saw the men and women of law enforcement demonstrate incredible courage, incredible bravery, uh, risk their lives uh, to defend the men and women who serve in this capital. Yes, Ted Cruz would like to extend a heartfelt and personal thank you to law enforcement who defended the Capitol from the insurrectionists who were egged on by Ted Cruz. Like, he led the effort in the Senate to block certification of the election results. He led the effort in the Senate to push the big lie. Those insurrectionists listened to what people like Ted Cruz told them about the big lie to the point that they stormed the Capitol. You could draw a straight line from Cruz's lies to the events that unfolded on January 6th. So it's very nice that Ted Cruz is grateful for the sacrifices of law enforcement, but if he wants to be useful, rather than offering thanks, he should be offering apologies. Now, aside from all of that, Cruz does take the opportunity in this interview to debut what will undoubtedly be his counterargument for those who oppose the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe. For the first 185 years of our nation's history, abortion was decided by elected legislatures, primarily at the state level. And, and listen, we all recognize that abortion is an issue that is, that is deeply emotional, it's personal. People feel very strongly and have sharply divided views. What happened in 1973, when Roe v. Wade was handed down, was seven unelected lawyers in, in black robes said to the American people, you pesky voters, your views don't matter. We know better than you do. We are philosopher kings, and we are going to decree the rule. And I'll tell you, that ruling, it was wrong the day it was issued. It's been wrong every day since then. But that ruling produced enormous anger, enormous division, because when people disagree and feel strongly about it, if the democratic process is available to them, you can go and make the case to your fellow citizens and you can argue for it. But with Roe, the court said, no, we know better than you do. If Roe is, is in fact overturned, and I pray that it is, the result will be it goes back to the elected legislatures. And by the way, these loons that are harassing the justices can go to their state legislature and, and that will argue be... in front of the legislature for the rule they want and will let democracy play out. Okay, so let me see if I have this right. In 1973, when seven unelected lawyers in black robes ruled on Roe, it was a corrupt decree handed down by philosopher kings. But today, when unelected lawyers in black robes again ruled on Roe, that's somehow no longer a corrupt decree handed down by philosopher kings, but a completely valid and reasonable position, even though it stands in stark contrast to the will of nearly two-thirds of all Americans. Yeah, no, that, that totally checks out. And of course, Ted Cruz says, well, if you want a favorable remedy, just go to your state legislatures and let democracy play out, which would be a great idea, 
but the state legislatures have been gerrymandered to within an inch of their lives. There is no fair representation in most of these state legislatures, and we all know it. These districts have been carved up with quote unquote surgical precision. We already know who's going to win in 90% of these seats. And yet that's Ted Cruz's solution here, to just hope that a gerrymandered state legislature that also isn't interested in the will of their constituents will suddenly heed those states' majorities. Remember, there is no state in the country where more than 30% of residents actually support over turning row. And yet the fact that we can't manage to get any semblance of a governing majority that represents the will of the people is a testament to just how unrepresentative, how broken, how corrupt our politics is in this country. Ted Cruz knows that, but the disingenuous performativeness is his brand. So these Republicans like Ted Cruz may try to subdue protests and diffuse responsibility onto state legislatures, but it's all because they know that they're incapable of actually defending this position themselves. It is aggressively unpopular, it is corrupt, and it's animating for Democrats and independents and yes, many Republicans who are finally recognizing the abject danger posed by the GOP. So when they try to get you not to protest and they whine about how speaking out against this corruption is uncivil, I tell them that if they're looking for incivility, it is stripping women of their bodily autonomy and issuing state-sponsored punishments against women and doctors over private healthcare decisions. They don't want civility, they want power. And they're just throwing a tantrum over the fact that they finally overstepped and Americans are waking up and paying attention and getting ready to vote. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work, subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I cover the most important stories each week, and my guest is always one of the top political figures, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Cory Booker, and so many more. The podcast link is also right here on this screen, so give it a listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.